we have a group of wine lovers who hope to read these great wines of the world that we see on the screen. Could you please recommend the menu for us to enjoy the wines and the brief presentation of the wines? You have one minute to look at the labels. If you cannot read one, I will read it for you once. And then you will have six minutes to complete the task. You would like a repeat? Yes, I'm sorry to all of you. Yes, I would like to repeat. We had a group of wine lovers who hope to make these great wines of the world that you will see in a while on the screen. Could you please recommend the menu for us to enjoy the wines and the brief presentation of the wines? You have one minute to look at the labels. If you cannot read one, you will read it for you. I will read it for you once. And then you will have six minutes to complete the task. Great. Is it clear? Because it wasn't very clear on the microphone. Not your fault, Paolo. I think you were just... I, it's, it's clear. You're yes. clear about it, so you, you're happy to start. Yes. One minute. I, I cannot see the vintage clearly of the Clos saint denis from Ponceau. Yeah, this is Clos saint denis from Ponceau, 45, 1945. to have you, you here and you brought some amazing wines. Uh, the 1945 uh, Ponceau is a, a special rarity uh, which I, I've not seen an actual bottle before. Um, very interesting. Uh, so for this task I think we will select the menu. Please let me know if there's anything that uh, is going too fast or if you need me to, to repeat anything if you have any ob objections or questions. Is there anything I should know in terms of dietary restrictions? Uh, anyone uh, that has anything in particular that I should know about? Great. Well, then let's let's begin. May I offer you a little glass of uh, something to start with before we get into this? You have such a wonderful menu. We might as well start with a little, uh, little aperitif, right? I think it would be very suitable for, for the ones that you have to start with something really fresh. Start with a great champagne and something that, that matches the level of this. So why don't we start with a... Uh, a uh, Lovely bottle of, of 1973 uh, Dom Perignon uh, to go with this, uh, this beautiful dinner. Of course, with that, we'll be serving a little uh, foie gras sablé um, with uh, green strawberries, just to get you guys started while I review this menu. First off, well, I think we should start with the, the, the lighter of these wines. That should be, the, for me, in my opinion, the, uh, the Ponceau 1945 at this point. Um, well, let's see how this bottle is, is, uh, is performing. Uh, but we'll, 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 I would like to serve something really elegant and fresh to go with this. We'd like to start with a sweet bit of veal, served with uh, some black morals and, uh, and an Amontillado-based sauce, go with this with a little bit of red currant. Uh, after that, I think we should head into the uh, Gaia Sorri San Lorenzo, 1997. Uh, really beautiful wine uh, that requires, I mean, this is still a useful, a young wine, still has plenty of tannin. Luckily, you guys have brought, brought this in in advance, so we'll have, have it decanted, give it as much air as we can, serving some white glasses uh, at about 60 degrees Celsius. It should show wonderfully with a, a red light rabbit ragu with a creamy blend and smoked tagache olives. So something that can tackle those still the tannin and the acidity of this wine. This is very, very structured wine, and we want to let the perfume really, really show itself. Um, after that, I think it's, it would be really prudent to head into the, uh, the Penfolds Grange 1990, uh, another great wine from, from Australia, um, which is, of course, the, the iconic wine of Australia, usually based on Shiraz, a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon in this vintage. Uh, you majority of it from the Barossa Valley, but uh, you should sometimes blend in other vineyards as well, so the Appalachian is just southeast of Australia. Um, with this, we'll have to take something that can tackle a little bit more fruit intensity, a little bit more richness in the wine. So I'd like to serve this with a, uh, a uh, onglet of grass-fed beef, served with a smoked, uh, smoked uh, bone marrow sauce bordelaise, for example. After that, we head into the uh, Harlan, uh, Harlan, oh, sorry, Harlan 1997. One of the iconic sort of cult wines of the Napa Valley, uh, 
uh, from Bill Harlan, 100% Cabernet Sauvignon uh, from, from, from the benches above Rutherford. Uh, really, really a majestic, intense, very, very fruit forward uh, and powerful wine based on Cabernet Sauvignon. So we'll again need something that can have, that has a lot of flavor, a lot of intensity, and can tackle those dense tan in that structure. I like to take like a speciality from, from my home country and serve um, an herb rub saddle of elk, so with braised salsify and a red wine based sauce. After that, we head into the sort of the, the sweeter wines uh, on the table. Uh, we have a beautiful wine here, one of my favorite wines in the whole world, Megan Middle, the Schatz of Berg Aus 2009. Uh, one of the true sort of aristocratic domains of the, of the Mosul Valley in Sa in this in this uh, um, in this instance, uh, Egon Mulo makes these wonderful wines from 100% Riesling. Uh, and this also is of course a late harvest where they select individual uh, bunches uh, of, of, of slightly rotten wines in the vintage cycle. Oh, nice. The ripest and the uh, the most intense grapes going to some of these wines. This has beautiful high acidity. Uh, prevalent sweetness, but this is an acid-driven wine, so I'd like to pair this with a lighter dessert first. I'd like to pair this with a, a sort of passion fruit souffle to go with those sort of ripe flavors, so especially in a vintage like 2009, those intense, um, intense, luscious, fruity tones with a uh, uh, coconut and lime sorbet to match to so get some of that creaminess to this to this dish. After that, we have the uh, Klein Constancia, Man de Constance, 2000. A really, 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 really iconic wine again from South Africa, resurrected in 1986. Uh, by this, uh, by this estate. Uh, beautiful wine based on on, uh, on muscat grapes uh, grown in the very, very south of, of the Cape, south of Cape Town, in, in Constancia, close to Table Mountain. This is a, an intensely sweet wine. Caramelized in flavor. I like to serve something that can tackle that. So I like to, to serve with something that has a lot of sweetness, some caramel, intense flavor. So a little warm chocolate budino with a, a, uh, a malted ice cream uh, and a little bit of orange jelly to go with that orangey flavor that's in the wine. I didn't mention as much about the uh, Domaine Ponceau uh, wine. Domaine Ponceau, I'm not even sure, had this vintage in 1945. I don't think this wine. Uh, was made. I'm not sure where this bottle was procured, but we will get into that. I think that vintage was purchased later than 1945. So this might be one of those special American models that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, after that, the uh, of course Gaia. I forgot to mention as well, based in, in Barbaresco. This is now a, a wine game. Time. One more task to perform at this table, and for that you will have two minutes. Paolo is going to tell you. You won't have to do anything. Just explain. <laughs> I can see an espresso machine in your restaurant. So, could you please advise me of the most suitable Grand Cru coffee to match with some black chocolate truffles? And also please suggest a spirit or a liqueur at the same time. For this task, you have two minutes. Are you ready? Ready? Yes. Two minutes. Great. So since we're using the uh, beautiful coffees from, from Nespresso here, which have, have really taken on a, 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 a mission and make, making their coffee so much better, and they're performing with these Grand Cru origin coffees, <clears throat> I believe with the chocolate dessert that you're having, the uh, uh, Grand Cru origin of Brazil from Minas Gerais will be this most suitable match as a sweetness and a pretty luscious flavor about it that I think is really um, really, really suitable for chocolate desserts, those intense flavors. To match with that, I think we should stay in South America. I'd like to match that with, uh, with digestives such as um, El Dorado uh, 1986 rum from Guyana, <coughs> pardon me, which also has that lovely, uh, sort of caramelly, nutty flavors that should go work so fantastically with both the dessert and with the coffee itself. <coughs> pardon me. How's that sound? Would you care for a liqueur as well, or you're happy with uh, with with uh, the rum there? Great. If you want to have a a liqueur, I think one of the greatest things we can have, and this is a recent discovery of mine. People have always talked about old Chartreuse, but I recently came across some, some really old Benedictine liqueur uh, from France, and I came across some 1950s bottlings of Benedictine um, herb liqueur. I think that will work majestically well with this as well. 
So it has much more denseness and much more uh, concentration of flavor with age, a lot of caramelized flavors uh, out of aging, as, of course, as well.